Happy National Kazoo Day. We here at the college hope you have a better Kazoo Day than Zach. We also hope that the strenuous and unprecedented five-day week didn't get you too bogged down. However, we are excited to bring quarter two to a close with a wonderful show for you today. Hey, you need to put that away. We have a show to run. Sorry, I got distracted. I can't be the only one that gets distracted in class by these things. Baker and Lekka sought to relieve me of my guilt in this first story. The proliferation of smartphones has revolutionized the way we talk to one another, but it's also revolutionized the way that we get distracted in our classrooms. No one really has a policy on cell phones, so like, especially me, I'm like using my cell phone all the time. No, I think it's distracting. I, I think it's, it's sad that you don't talk to each other like you used to. You know, I definitely notice a difference in that. Well, there is less talking nowadays because people are texting, but texting is still a big distraction, for me at least. Although Eastview has implemented policies to combat in-class distractions, the results have been um, mixed. I kind of like having no cell phones in the class just because I feel like people talk to each other more. I don't really find cell phone use distracting in class. I mean, if you want to be on your cell phone, that's silent. That doesn't really distract me. By the end of the period, they're kind of antsy to like get back on their phone, but most people can handle it pretty well. I depend on them to text you, so I know that's backwards when I don't want them in the classroom, but I love to be able to text you. And of course, I love my phone. You know, I get it. There's just a time and a place. Signing off for The Flash, this is Baker. Hey guys, you know, I find it really interesting. One group that is undergoing change is Eastview's own student council. Caitlin got the scoop in this next story. With no one coming in or out, state government at the Capitol has been put on hold. But at Eastview High School, discussions are still taking place for our future. Everyone has heard the name Student Council, but not many know what happens within it. Student Council is responsible for everything throughout the year. The biggest thing at Eastview that Student Council works on is going to be those celebration weeks, the, the two color days throughout the year, and then Winterfest and Homecoming. Student Council's influence comes with the amount of students that are really engaged in it. We kind of control what's going on at ECU and how things are being run on the student level, not on the administration level, on the, on the level that impacts the students. As the construction workers are trying to improve the capital, the members of Student Council are enhancing the ECU community. We do organize events like the government and we make sure those events impact the people in a positive way and you know we just basically try to enhance the student life and the school's reputation as well. The more students that join the more power student council has to change things here at ECU. By both the capital and student council large decisions are being made frequently. Student council may seem to lurk in the shadows but its impact brings light to Eastview. Signing off for The Flash, this is Caitlin. It's great that our own student council is adjusting to these times to create the best climate possible for our student body to thrive in. Staying on the topic of change, one of the teachers at ECU has changed the way he gets around. We will cycle on over to Andrea for more on this teacher. Many of you may have seen Mr. Tollison walking his bike through the halls, but the question is, why? I started biking three, four years ago. Several reasons. Uh, number one, it's good for fitness. Keep you in shape. It's an easy way to you know, get a little bit of a workout every day. By working in the science department and coaching both the girls and boys swim and dive team keeps Mr. Tollefson busy, but nothing will stop him from biking. Last February is when I took it up seriously, uh, second week of February, so I'm looking to try to get to one year of biking full time to work. And Winters may be cold, but won't stop Mr. T from biking. No, that's one of the things when I decided to do this, I was gonna ignore the weather. Probably 22 below the other morning uh, coming over was the coldest I've ever biked in. In two weeks, Mr. Tollison will have biked to school and to Falcon Ridge for practice every day for one full year. Reporting for The Flash, this is Andrea. That is an incredible goal that he is working through. Hey, did you hear about the first ever upperclassmen versus underclassmen basketball classic? All I heard was that the upperclassmen are going to own the court. Stay tuned for the parody of Key and Peele's East West Bowl. It's that time for the annual underclassmen, upperclassmen basketball classic. That's right. Now let's meet those pesky underclassmen. Robert Jr. Senior the Third, University of Denver. 
Jeremiah. Malachi. Stanford. De Kings London, L. Goodingford. Washington College. Harvard. Boise State. Son of a principal, University of Nebraska Lincoln. Apostrophe. The Ohio State University. Wow, that sure is a squad right there. Yes, that's right, Sasha. That Robert Jr. Senior to the third has been growing exponentially this season. Yep, that is true. And when you average 60 points a game, there's no doubt that you're one of the best players in the league. Simple ridiculousness. But the upperclassmen have sure come to play. Let's meet them. Sylvester Bester Lester, PhD, Michigan State. Daniel Netanyahu, Yeshiva University. Strike! Umpire University. Rose Petters, Central Iowa Juvenile Detention Center. True. Homeschooled. Zach Pugmire, Brigham Young University.